come to the course formation is uh, I discussed about non traditional provided in the past is that guys uh, so your voice is dropping continuously there you know it yeah it's now audible sir that actually that a free process so right process and or they are actually you know sometimes it is audible sometimes like that also. So can you hear me now? So yeah, it's audible, sir. I'm closer to that to my mic. Okay. Okay, so there are actually uh, three different kinds of uh, uh, modules actually we are discussing here. The first one is the actually mechanical type. Okay, so here uh, mostly uh, mechanical type processes are audible. So like. Uh, we will discuss about uh, different types of mixing also, and then uh, next one we are using it's so not sir your voice is continuously dropping so we couldn't connect it properly. Okay, so I'm trying. To Maybe you can try rejoining. Maybe some uh, sometime Teams meeting causes error. So maybe you can try rejoining once again. Okay, so uh, we'll come to the course. Uh, advanced machine processes. Okay, so uh, we are actually we are going to discuss about different types of non traditional machine process. Okay, so uh, there are different types of like mechanical type, um, uh, thermoelectric type, and some chemical type of uh, advanced machine process. Are there and uh, now in mechanical type? Actually, we'll be discussing about that uh, abrasive flow finishing. Okay, um, then uh, uh, then uh, electromechanical type actually like uh, EDM process, electro discharge machining, and then electrochemical machining process. Okay, so now in chemical type, there are process like actually chemical machining are there. And thermoelectric type mostly actually it is uh, nowadays it is used to like we are using laser. Uh, and wing machining, laser beam machining process, electron beam machining process, electro discharge machining process. Okay, so electrochemical machining process and individual process, every process has actually their different applications are there. Okay, so uh, like uh, uh, whatever, uh, for, uh, whatever work is material in condition in EDM, nothing is used. At the same condition and process, uh, I'm uh, cannot be used for ECM. Okay, so like uh, now that. Some applications like in electro discharge machine process, it is mostly used for actually for making different kinds of dyes. Okay, okay. So uh, here actually electric energy in terms of actual spark it is deposited. That heat energy it is deposited on the work surface on a very small area. And now if we consider this uh, ECM process, there is that is loss is used. So here in that case, actually anodic dissolution of material is there. Okay, so there are so there are different applications because of different application, different types of advanced machine processes are used. So one single process cannot be used for machining of only any kind of workpiece. Okay, so uh, as these are actually specialized workpieces, specialized machines are used for specialized workpieces. Like if you consider this electrochemical machine process here, so anodic dissolution of materials are used. Okay, so here in this case material should have certain kind of actually electrical conductivity. So in that case, actually that is the anode, which is used as a tool, and then workpiece, which is as a what uh, means anode, uh, cathode is the actual tool, and anode is actually that is the workpiece is there. So any kind of in non uniform profile, any kind of uh, freeform surface profile on the tool can be uh, can be generated on the workpiece surface, okay? So here actually there is an electrolyte is used, 
like you can use uh, normal sodium chloride or sodium nitrate or normal the salt actually whatever we take the salt in a seal solution also you can use okay so here uh, electrolyte flow should be there actually in between this tool and workpiece and uh, because of this flow of uh, electrolyte whatever these debris particles which are generated that is removed and hydrogen gas is also evolved in the cathode okay so this hydrogen gas also has to be removed from the entire electrode gap like uh, in ECM process, which is mostly used actually for making these turbine blades. You know, uh, these turbine blades which are actually made of high strength temperature resistant material. Okay, so this kind of high strength temperature resistant material, it is very difficult to machine by uh, normal conventional milling presses. Okay, any kind of vertical milling or horizontal milling or turning operation, you cannot, uh, very difficult to process this kind of material, high strength temperature resistant materials. Okay. So in that case, uh, mostly actually this uh, HRC is actually this uh, uh, hardness and uh, uh, in C scale actually. So here it is more than actually for 12 HRC. So in that case, actually conventional machine process, it is not economical and tool that is a frequent failure of the tools are there. So uh, to get rid of uh, that uh, problems or the limitations of this kind of conventional process, like in we can use CCM process and any kind of free service we can be generated. Now this tool which is used as an electrode or cathode. Okay, so this tool uh, material which is actually very, uh, it can be uh, any kind of soft material we can use. Okay, so this kind of tool material. So any kind of sort material we can use. So sort materials are used because actually we can make any kind of shapes on the tool. Okay, so to give the like copper, brass, these are the very soft material. So we can easily machine this kind of material and we can generate any kind of free form surface on this soft material. And on the workpiece surface, it is a very hard material in which this electrolyte is there. Okay, so uh, uh, like uh, turbine press, you can see that actually this kind of Curvatures are there. Okay, so these curvatures it cannot be generated by this kind of normal conventional milling process. Okay, so you have to use the five axis uh, CNC milling operation. Then only you can generate that kind of uh, that kind of free form surface profile on the surface. However, uh, in five axis milling machine also actually there is a limitation on the tool itself. Actually. This tool material it should be actually harder than this your workpiece material. Okay, but when a workpiece material is very hard, like STTR, high strength temperature resistant material, like titanium alloy or grade five, okay, TI6, L4, PU, we have heard that kind of material, which is very hard material. So in that case, actually, this tool has a limitations. So that's why actually we use this kind of non conventional machine process very easy to generate any kind of shape. Okay, uh, sir, so I have a question. Uh, I have a okay. question. Uh, regarding this, uh, when we are talking about this turbine blades and all that, uh, yeah. this pre-machining is being uh, done on uh, this mechanical machine, five axis machining, and final machining is done uh, by ECM, or the whole uh, uh, job profile uh, is done by the ECM. Whole profile is generated by ECM because whatever this profile you have to generate on the material, so you have to make that tool itself. That uh, whatever this uh, uh, geometry you want to generate on the workpiece material. Okay, that turbine weight. Your tool is actually made that opposite to that. Okay, opposite replica of, of that. And then you have to just drop, you have to move in the downward direction towards the workpiece and it will be generated on the workpiece. Same replica will be generated on the workpiece surface. Pre machining is not required in five axis machining, five axis milling machine. Okay. No, no. I, so, I, I was talking about this ECM process, electrochemical machining. Huh. So in that so pre machining, pre -machining, pre -machining by five or six machining machine is not required. Pre, uh, you have to generate the replica. You have to generate okay. the replica on a soft material. That you can okay. generate on a on a five axis milling machine. Okay, so, uh, so that tool has to be on a soft material, and you are generating a uh, surface or workpiece on that workpiece surface. It is very hard material. Okay, so tool is the negative replica of the workpiece which is you are generating. Okay, like this is the mouse here. So this is the replica you have generated on a workpiece surface. Okay. So it basically it, the tool basically follows the path of this replica and it generates the yeah. replica uh, of the actual part. On the workpiece. Okay. Uh -huh. It is like that only. 
so it just like okay, a old so concept concept of copy turning machine just like earlier days there is a copy turning machine the same same concept is being used here also so like that actually that same replica will be generated on the whiteboard uh -huh. surface so like this is the this is your actual tool here and mm -hmm. same thing actually you have to generate you have to generate a mold okay so mm -hmm. what you will do so initially the, your work piece is flat basically your work piece is flat and this is the tool it is cathode and work piece is anode now we are moving down moving down and while moving down actually wherever this distance is less their current density is more and machining will start there where distance is less or resistance is less okay so in that case actually your current density will be more and your machining will be more in that case in that way okay so this is one of the process like edm also similar type of similar to edm uh, ecm <clears throat> but in electro discharge machining process instead of actually electrolyte we are using dielectric mm -hmm. okay so in that case actually what happens there is a dielectric it is like a kerosene you can use deionized water also okay so in that case what happens actually this uh, tool again this tool is actually same negative replica and work piece which is has to be generated on the work piece surface tool is actually cathode and work piece is anode here but in between this actually what about this uh, liquid which is actually dielectric fluid Okay, so what happens actually? Uh, uh, there is a RC circuit, resistance capacitance circuit is there, and in between actually there is a cath uh, this capacitor. So basically, this capacitor charges and discharges, charges and discharges. When certain uh, potential difference you are applying, this capacitor charges. Okay, so then uh, in between this tool and what is so this cathode and anode both are actually very less, and uh, this gap between this tool and what is which is called actually interlayer. Gap. and this gap is actually less than one millimeter in case of actually normal EDM process. So it is one millimeter. So that's why actually what happens, whatever these electrons, it breaks loose from the cathode. Okay, because this cathode, which is connected to the negative terminal. Okay, so these electrons breaks loose from the cathode and it is attracted towards the anode, which is actually a positive terminal. So while this electron, which is moving through this actually dielectric, dielectric actually it is electrically neutral. So this dielectric, it hits the dielectric molecules, and these molecules also breaks into ion and electrons. So ions are actually attracted towards the cathode again, and electrons are actually attracted towards the anode again. So these electrons again actually attacks, I mean, collides with another molecules of dielectric. So like that actually, so there is a surge of actually electrons which is flowing from the cathode towards the anode, and there is a surge of ions which is flowing from the anode towards the cathode okay so like that actually this electron flows and cath uh, this ions flows so because of this electrons bombardment on the work piece surface what happens actually there is a so this dielectric has that is a dielectric constants so it means so whenever this you are applying certain potential difference so it will sustain to certain potential difference and when this Capacitor actually discharges at that time and actually there is a surge of electrons. It actually bombard on the work piece surface into a very small area. And that small area actually and electrons actually hits on the uh, on the work piece surface with a very high velocity. And that small area, it forms a small amount of crater. So their temperature actually reaches more than 2000 degrees centigrade into a very small, small area. Okay, so why about this far quarters? Okay, so that small area material is removed. So in the form of a crater, again, actually this capacitor charges and discharges. So like that actually this, there is a circuit. So you can see that actually electrical uh, current flow, actually this diagram you can see here. So current actually it reaches to the maximum value and it uh, uh, crosses that actually dielectric, uh, uh, dielectric constant of that actually uh, uh, dielectric fluid. And then uh, there is a discharge and then actually then current drops. Again, current increases like that actually it happens. Okay, so here mostly the DC power supply uh, is used. Okay, so there is no AC power supply. AC power supply, if you are using AC power supply, what will happen if you use AC power supply? So in that case, actually, in the first cycle, whenever uh, this, uh, this cathode and anode, actually there is a uh, top one tool is cathode and work this with the anode. And in the next cycle, in AC, next cycle, what will happen? This tool will become anode and work piece will become cathode. So it will actually reverse, it will reverse so that, uh, so that's why actually AC current is not used, only DC power supply is used. 
in this case. Okay. So other uh, uh, other types of actually this uh, uh, machining process in mechanical tile. So that is uh, uh, abrasive jet machining, abrasive water jet machining process, okay, ultrasonic machining process. Okay, so uh, there are different types of finishing process also there, like abrasive floor finishing process, which is used actually for polishing any kind of complicated geometry. Okay, so like in knee implant, we have seen knee implant. So that knee implant actually, uh, this uh, knee implant actually it moves over the surface <laughs> on a polythene pad. So in, in our world, it's actually this knee, uh, whatever we have knee, in between this knee, there is a fluid are there, so it reduces the friction. So when this actually, this uh, fluid actually dries up, then there is a huge friction in between this implant surface on the, mm, so it, it wears out and it, uh, it actually generates different kinds of debris particles and uh, uh, so uh, so in that case what will happen uh, whatever uh, person this aged person it feels a huge amount of pain so that's why this knee implants are actually um, it is uh, replaced okay so sir, are you uh, referring to this that's... sir are you referring to this uh, lapping process uh, lapping, uh, actually, uh, lapping also it is possible. Okay, so but uh, actually in lapping process, actually you cannot automate this lapping process. Uh, in case of actually freeform surface, what happens actually? Uh, uh, this lapping process, uh, this means on a freeform surface, there are uh, so many polynomial surfaces, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's why actually this uh, we need actually free, uh, uniform polishing over the surface of the work. Okay, we need so, to so basically, polish. so basically, the abrasives are being, uh, I can say, mounted or being glued to a paper or a uh, cloth type, and then it is being used for uh, uh, cleaning or polishing that surface, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, so there is a polyethylene pad. You can see yeah. it is a uh, basically a velvet kind of uh, uh, cloth is there, and abrasive okay. particles are sprinkled over the surface of the cloth and mm -hmm. now you have to move over the surface so okay. uh, to automate the process actually you can use a robotic arm okay, okay. so you can use a robotic arm but uh, uh, you cannot we cannot afford actually this kind of robotic arm because it will become very but, uh, but this is only for the polishing uh, polishing process not actually the material uh, polishing uh, it is a, uh, so uh, this is one of the polishing process okay okay so uh, lapping basically it is a general i uh, mean traditional finishing process but what we are telling them actually this limitation of this uh, lapping process in mm -hmm. that uh, lapping process. Only flat surfaces, not, flat surfaces can be done. Uh, flat lapping, surface, but, uh, uh, but some kind of actually uh, complex surface also you can polish, but it depends on the skill of the labor. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you want to polish a freeform kind of surface, uh, while actually it is a very complex kind of surfaces are there. So in that case, lapping process uh, may not work actually. So in that case, we need a process where we need a flexible tool. Okay, so we need a flexible tool which can move over the surface with a uniform force. Okay, so there are two processes are there. One is actually abrasive flow finishing. There is a polymeric media is used, which is a highly viscoelastic media. And uh, this uh, uh, this rheological media, which is mixed with the abrasive particles. And uh, so this media in such a way that if you take in your hand, actually it will take the shape of your hand. So whatever work piece is there, suppose this, this kind of work pieces are there. So uh, uh, this media, it can flow over the surface. And you have to make a work piece fixture in such a way that it will flow over the surface with the uniform force. So there is a fixture, uh, means uh, uh, making this fixture of this work piece, actually it is very much important. How you are making the fixture of the work piece. Okay, so this fixture is made in such a way that there is a uniform gap for the flow of the media over the surface of the workpiece, and it will generate a uh, uniform force over the surface of the workpiece. Okay. And this uh, media is resilient enough, it can hold the abrasive particles. Suppose we are using the grinding operation. In that grinding operation, there is a uh, uh, bonded media. So this media, it is uh, bonded over the uh, surface of the wheel. Okay. So it has a fixed part. But in this case, actually, abrasive flow media, it does not. Uh, a fixed part. Whatever this, if there is a protrusion like this here, this kind of protrusion is there, it, it will move over the surface. Okay, so it can take the shape of the workpiece. So that is the advantage. 
Okay. And another process is actually mandatory biological finishing process. They are uh, actually the uh, AFM process actually all over this biological media, which is very costly. But in mandatory biological finishing process, <coughs> this media consists of actually magnetic particles, ferromagnetic particles basically, and some base media like water, or you can use oil based media. Uh, you can use paraffin oil, silicon oil, that kind of oil based media also you can use. And iron particles, actually, these ferromagnetic particles, it is a special type of magnetic particles, which is 99.99% pure and uh, uh, pure iron particles, which is used. And uh, so, uh, by using some external magnetic field, so if we apply certain external magnetic field, so this media will become actually stable. And uh, so, these iron particles will form the chains, and in between chains, these stable particles will be held. Okay, and we have to move the media. We have to move the media over the surface of the wire. So this media have to move over the surface of the wire, okay? so that any complex surface we can produce. So any if, uh, any kind of uh, surface, actually complex surface, we can produce. Only thing is that actually you have to apply magnetic field in such a way that magnetic field is applied on the surface itself. So why do you need the polish? Suppose you we need the policing about this surface. We have to uh, generate a magnetic field so that actually magnetic field intensity will be very high here. In other places, there is no magnetic. So here, magnet design is actually very much important, and fixture design is also important. So, uh, so here actually there are, uh, as I told earlier, there are different kinds of mechanical type process. Uh, uh, like actually this abrasive jet machining, abrasive water jet machining. Okay, uh, ultrasonic machining. So these are the different kinds of magnet, uh, mechanical type process. Now thermoelectric type processes are there, like electrochemical machining, electro discharge machining, uh, laser uh, uh, machining. Okay, electron beam machining, ion beam machining. So uh, these are the thermoelectric type. Okay, and third one is the actually chemical machining are there. So these are the different processes actually. So different lectures are there. So you can uh, you can go through this actually video. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, you can send the uh, questionnaires uh, through our actual forum. So uh, um, so I we should answer actually those uh, questions. Sir, can you give some more? Uh, sir, can you give uh, some more insights on water jet machining and uh, abrasive jet machining? Like uh, what? Uh, what are the particle media? What kind of uh, nozzles? What kind of material being used over there? Uh, uh, abrasive jet machining and oh, abrasive water jet machining is the main difference. Is that actually in abrasive jet machining, air is actually as a media. Uh, okay, and in abrasive water jet machining, water is the actually flowing media. So in abrasive jet machining, actually this air media actually it flows with a very high like 700 uh, meter per second. So this is the velocity. So there is a compressed air is required. So compressed air, you have to generate a compressed air. Through this compressed air, actually this you are uh, flowing this uh, air. Now there is a nozzle at the side of this actually uh, compressed air. So uh, through this nozzle actually this uh, or hoppers, there are hoppers are there. So these abrasive particles, actually these uh, dry abrasive particles without moisture. Okay, so they are mixing with the this uh, compressed air and it is moving through a very small diameter nozzle, suppose two millimeter diameter, one or two millimeter diameter. So that is a very small diameter nozzle, it is moving. Okay, so in abrasive jet machining, actually this uh, media through which actually these abrasive particles are coming, they are uh, yeah. Okay, so that is a compressed air. You can use actually this nitrogen gas also, you can use or CO2 gas also. You can use. Okay, so mostly actually people are using air only. And if you are using actually nitrogen gas, you can uh, get actually cylinder compressed, uh, where compressed ga uh, gases are actually here. Okay, so mostly actually that is a compressor is used and air, uh, air is coming through this actually uh, through this. Uh, uh, and now it is moving through, it is passing through a nozzle. And before that, actually, there is a mixing chamber is there where the abyss particles are mixing with the compressed air. It is flown away through this nozzle. And uh, uh, so uh, so this nozzle diameter is very, very less, one or two millimeter. And it comes, when it comes through this nozzle, 
its velocity is very high around 780 meter per second and in that with that high velocity actually going about it falls over the surface in a small diameter so that is a uh, removal of material so most actually these brittle materials are actually uh, removed but for a ductile material that is a problem is that actually uh, so in ductile material it takes longer time or it is not that much efficient Okay, so uh, for um, ductile material it happens actually it hits over the surface, then overheating that is a strain hardening will be there, then there is a brittle fracture will be there. So it is not that much efficient for brittle material. There is a immediate that will be a brittle fracture, and small small tiny chips will be generated over the surface because of this heating of these abrasive particles with a because of this kinetic energy of this abrasive particle which are heating over the surface and then tiny chips are actually generated. Okay, so now we have to move the nozzle over the surface or over the contour where actually you need a uh, machining operations. So suppose for cutting on a granite surface, okay, so it can be used. So any kind of complex, but on a 2D plate. So 3D surface machining is not uh, possible. On a uh, 2D surface, there is suppose there is a plate is there, you have to make a, suppose you have to make a DR over the surface on a granite plate. So you can easily cut. <clears throat> Sir, is there any difference in the material of the nozzle from water jet machining and uh, uh, this uh, air jet machining? Yeah, the same, yeah. so same, this, same type of nozzle is used. Uh, nozzle, uh, nozzle actually this in water jet machining actually this higher, uh, this velocity is more higher actually. So what about this nozzle which is used mostly in uh, in, uh, uh, in case of actually abrasive water jet, the UV nozzle, so that kind of nozzles are there, or tungsten carbide nozzle. They may be there, but they have actually certain lives are there. So uh, after certain time, actually you will see that actually this clogging of these nodules will be there. So it may clog whatever these abrasive particles uh, they may clog, and its diameter it, it will wear out, and its diameter will increase, and then there will be flaring of this abrasive uh, jet will be there. So uh, this curve fluid, whatever this curve fluid will be there, so it may not be actually, uh, uh, so small curve fluid may not be there, it will be higher. Okay, so, but in case of actually uh, abrasive water jet machine, actually this curve fluid is actually less. Uh, so that is, uh, that's why actually it is mostly used as uh, this abrasive water jet machine. Uh, this abrasive material is same for both the cases or different, sir? Uh, abrasive particles are same actually. So it depends on still what kind of materials you are machine. Okay, so uh, like silicon carbide, aluminum, mostly these are actually uh, because the, uh, these, uh, what about these abrasive particles which are coming through this nozzle? After that, it is not reused actually. So that's why whatever the cheap uh, abrasive particles, silicon carbide or aluminum, these are actually used. But boron carbide or diamond, artificial diamonds, actually, they are very they are costly, actually. So generally, they are not uh, generally used. Mostly silicon carbide and aluminum, I have seen. Okay, uh, sir, but, uh, where, this, where this uh, particular technology takes place? Because uh, very rare cases I have seen this water jet machining or abrasive jet machining. So particularly, particular, particularly to which field? Is it related to, uh, I would say, space, uh, aerospace or aerodyne? To particularly to which field it is being mapped? Because I have not seen in automotive industry or any industry in currently. Only special application in one or two cases I have seen it. But uh, not, actually, uh, it depends on actually different applications. Actually. So this uh, every non-traditional machining process, like uh, uh, this abrasive water jet machining. So in mining industry, uh, it is used because here, uh, so water is actually mixed with abrasive particles, so it will not generate any kind of heat as so okay. uh, uh, coal mining, so it can be used. Uh, so for cutting, mostly for cutting purpose uh, and mostly, uh, mostly uh, related. Related to stone cutting and all that mining industry. Ha, ha, mining, ha, stone cutting purpose. Okay. 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 Right. Got it. Otherwise, you can mostly actually the CDM machines you can see in industry. Uh, mostly EDM machines are used. But after EDM, uh, you can see that actually there is a heat affected zone is there. So what about surface actually on the surface of the work is there will be heat affected zone, and it is different than uh, this base material. Again, you have to do certain. Uh, other process to remove that actually heat abated zone and there is a uh, this recast clear which is told actually this whatever these debris particles or whatever this uh, 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 re-solidified metal okay so it uh, it 
to deposit on the workplace surface in case of the CDM machine. So that also you have to remove by certain uh, finishing process like average for finishing. Why that actually you have to remove. So, so, uh, every process ferrous, so ferrous and non-ferrous both materials can be uh, machined with this uh, process or only the ferrous materials can be done? Which one? So the CDM? Uh, no, water jet machining, abrasive jet machining. No, no, abrasive jet machining mostly it is used for uh, brittle material. Only brittle material can be used. So no non ferrous material material is advisable to. Uh, so, uh, uh, so for uh, ductile material actually uh, it is not uh, efficient. Okay. It will take time. So, uh, so it has to be hard actually. Plastic mm -hmm. uh, means by fast plastic deformation. Using mm -hmm. plastic deformation, these tiny chips will not come outside. Okay. So you have to, so it will not come outside. So the uh, concept is that it is heat by certain kinetic energy and tiny chips will come outside by brittle fracture. Okay, okay, sir. So uh, 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 these lectures are there actually, you can follow some books, uh, uh, like MacGock, one book is there by MacGock or also DKGN, one book is there. Okay, so there are different books are there. So I have uh, shared the slides also. If you need slides again, then I can share it again. And yeah, uh, questions, yeah. questions will be actually MCQ type. Mm -hmm. Okay, some uh, 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 recalling uh, type of questions from assignments will come. Mm -hmm. And some questions actually from uh, like uh, uh, some uh, numerical questions also will come. Okay. Like open type questions. Okay, so like mm -hmm. uh, those are actually a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay, but those are actually only twenty percent of the questions. Mostly eighty percent will be recall type from assignments or some uh, questions, uh, uh, multiple choice type questions where actually answers will be given. You have to choose the answer, right answer. Mm -hmm. It will be uh, easy at time. So you can follow the books of this uh, MacGock. Uh, because in advanced machine process, you can. Uh, I have one question, sir. Uh, I was just referring to the NPTEL site in that mm -hmm. if you want to go for a certification, uh, then you have to go to a center for the examination or is it online? Uh, uh, exam will be online only, actually. So you have to register for this course and then uh, 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 at the end, actually, uh, they will give some deadline. So before that, yes, you have to register yes. for exam also. No, uh, suppose I registered it. Uh, there was written it that you have to take out your admit card and you have to go to a center for the examination. Is it like that or is it the online online test? How is it, it is so? online type questions, but uh, like a GE exam or uh, <laughs> GATE okay. exam. So, so all, over India, okay. a, okay. all over India, there, is a, there are centers are there. It is conducted by TCS. So uh, basically, I have to visit a center to give the examination. Am I right? Uh, during examination, you have to visit the center. OK, OK, that's what I was asking. OK, right. Understood. So it will be nearer to your uh, actual place. Uh, all over India, there are centers are there. Ahmedabad is there, sir? Centers? Ahmedabad, it will be there. So I'm not sure, actually. Because okay. <laughs> NPTEL, NPTEL uh, and along with uh, this uh, TCS, actually, uh, they are organizing these exams. Okay, TCS, so basically ion zone. Okay, got it. Ah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Got it, sir. Okay, so sir. maybe if you, if you have some study material or some slides to share, maybe you can share us on this. Slides, I think I have, it is given. Okay, otherwise I shall tell my TS to share it again. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a forum is there for this course, so they are actually, uh, I, shall, I shall share it again. Uh, you can share it, sir. We can download it right away. Okay, now also. Right now, actually, I was trying from my oh. office, but it was not working, so I'm not sitting in my laptop. So uh, uh, tomorrow, I shall tell my students, I shall get this to upload all these slides. Yeah, that would be wonderful. So, okay, so tomorrow, I shall upload. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you. <laughs> so any questions from other participants? Uh, So participation is very low or only few people have applied for this course? <laughs> uh, first, uh, actually, initially, first uh, interaction people don't come, but next okay. time people will come. So now they are already st they are starting only. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, 
if there is okay, no then, uh, then so we can wind up uh, so i can wind up now i think yeah. we can do that yeah thank so, you thank you very much for the wonderful guidance sir thank you very much to you thank you Okay, Indrila Bose, uh, you have asked, uh, can you machine 3D complicated structures with this? And that I told actually, any kind of complicated structure can be machined by the CCMD. So it is very easy. Just you have to make the actual replica of the uh, work piece as a tool on a soft material. Okay. So we can make it by actual CNC. You can use by five CNC machine to make any kind of complicated shapes, which has to be generated on a very high hard material. So it can be generated. So ECM and EDM can generate any complicated 3D structures very easy. I think no other questions now we can end up. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.